Welcome back to MLG. It's time for game number two. We've already started the countdown. PRG against JYP. Can uh, JYP engineer come back? Maybe, maybe. That, that map, DRG is just about unbeatable on against Protoss, so I think every other map JYP will have a better chance, and he showed his strength there anyways. On to the player introductions in the bottom right. Seeming invincible in game number one. Make some noise for DRG. <laughs> his opponent, supposedly the best Protoss versus Zerg in the world, lasting a good 10 to what seemed like 10, 12 minutes against DRG, DRG's relentless assaults. Give it up for JYP. Artosis? Yes. What do you think we should see from a Protoss in cross spots against the final boss, Zerg? Well, you know, this is, it's going to be pretty hard because I feel like we're going to see DRG get himself into mutas somehow. I'm not saying necessarily he'll open with them off two base or something because normally he likes to go three base. But of course, there are the rocks in this map that make that a little bit harder. But my point is, you know, if he goes into that mutalist attack, it's going to be hard for JYP because there's a lot of terrain here that the Mutas can fly over to get away. Yeah, this, um, it, it, if this goes on to a, a pretty long game, like let's say that the Zerg gets like the bottom left or the upper right, mm -hmm. um, oftentimes we see uh, Protosses just push towards the, the, the main, yeah. the original source. And that's uh, what makes the way you can kill Zerg unique is because uh, sometimes you know, in most cases in StarCraft, where do you attack? You attack the expansions, but occasionally, depending on positioning with Zerg, you just want to get to where their main is because that's where their hive is and probably where the vast majority of their tech is. And once you do that, you've knocked Zerg back into the Stone Age, and if you've gotten that far, you probably already have a full tech tree, and it basically becomes a complete nightmare for the Zerg. So I I'm not guaranteeing that'll happen because we don't know really the course of the game, but if it goes into late game, there's a possibility we could see that. Yeah. All right, so it looks like we just got the Xperia Sony smartphone poll results in. And uh, they are, in fact, it's 66 to 32. Not bad, actually, for JYP. That's right. <laughs> and uh, we do see a little pylon block going down. He's going to have to cancel that, though, because there are four Zerglings on it. JYP not yet making his own Nexus, but getting a cannon right away. He's got to play a little bit safe. He does not want to lose yet. He does not want to lose yet for sure, no, man. Ideally, he would not want to lose in this entire game. I think that's probably part of this core strategy here. Now we have... Um, Can you? <laughs> I would love to have a strategy like that. Yeah, man. It's a pretty good one. Well, you know, it, it, when it comes to distances, Zergs always want to have a greater distance. Uh, <laughs> from their opponent. The farther away they are, the more drones they can squeeze out. That's true, and you want to squeeze out a lot of drones, Tasteless. That's, I mean, that's how Zerg rolls. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, but how many gases will JYP take? That's what the next thing we're going to be watching. In fact, DRG is going to be watching. Of course, you always get the two in the main, but at the natural, after that Nexus is done, we're going to see if he makes one or zero. JYP normally goes for zero, but if you go for that one, then that's going to mean a lot of sentries or a lot of Stargate tech. All right, well, we're going to have a little bit of downtime here. Um, essentially, they're both in a race right now. They can't really interact with each other too much uh, because they are so far apart. So they're just trying to develop their economies as much as they can. Now, with the Zerglings attacking the rocks, it's easy to squeeze a little probe in here. Uh, and this is where the queen is going to try to uh, block off that probe. And the funny thing is the queen is so slow off the creep that the probe can actually sort of take its time. Yeah, you know, he's got to hit it with Zerglings, but why send the Zerglings back? There's nothing to hide. DRG always goes three base with no gas. And, you know, that's just how he gets that economy going. All right, looks like the third base is on the way now for um, our Zerg player. Plus one for the Protoss. And these are uh, both very good builds. Uh, very uh, textbook-like builds. Um, nothing adventurous so far, but then again, why do something adventurous in a, you know, a, a pretty typical map like this? 
yeah. uh, in a very standard PVZ situation. I think, Jay, I think JYP is good enough in this matchup and confident enough that he says, I'm not going to do anything wild. I'm not going to do anything crazy. I'm going to play my game, and I think I can take out DRG. And that's, I mean, that's a manly approach. you got to hand it to him for that. Well, I mean, when you consider that in game one, uh, DRG was actually blindsided by this ninja attack with the pylon in the main, Void Ray coming in there, uh, the Zealots at the bottom, and he just sort of like, pushed back and and then managed to then put uh, JYP in, in, in hell for like, 12 minutes. Mm. That's pretty impressive. By the way, guys, we're going to have a bonus match tonight. It's going to be Idra Idra versus Pult, so definitely check that out. Wow. We love you nerds here at MLG. We want to give you as much eSports action as we possibly can. That will be casted by Day9 and DJ Weep, so definitely stay tuned for that. Well, Tasteless, we have the four gates for JYP. We have the Twilight Council up. So quite likely we're going to see uh, Blink researched very quickly. We already have plus two on the way. And that's a very strong unit composition. But of course, first, we need to have a little bit of zealot harassment. Make sure that you force enough roaches to you know, make it worthwhile to get all those Blink stalkers out. Well. It, if I had to be um, on a map and I had to try to beat DRG, which I don't think I would ever be able to do, um, I would definitely not want to be in, in one of these positions like this. Yeah, you want to be a little bit closer. I, I, I want to I have the room or uh, to, to do something creative or sneaky like we saw in the previous map. Um, and I don't know, this is going to be pretty tough. It certainly, certainly is. We're having a lot of sentries made right now, and it's some decent zealot harassment going on. You know, just trying to take down a few roaches here and there. Uh, the Zealots are, once again, to force roaches. Roaches are expensive. Zerg actually would love to continue to drone in. In fact, is once he has enough roaches out. But this kind of slows down his economy a little bit anyways. Um, yeah, that's a very good observation, Artosis. But yeah, roaches are, are great, and they, they kill Zealots. But ideally, he wants to be making drones. So don't, don't be confused. When he sends those Zealots in there, this is not him blindly charging units in there. For no reason. It's a, it's a very uh, technical economy, or, or managing your opponent's economy. If you do certain things, they have to react in certain ways. When they react in those certain ways, then you know how uh, well you know, how they're going to be behaving later on in the game with the given tools they mm. uh, set themselves up with, and that's how you can win. And now we're going to see something really cool because he is getting hallucination right now. Oh, sick. And this means that he's going to use it to make some phoenixes not only to scout, but to spot the high ground at the expansion. I think we're going to see some harassment there as some more units warp in, and he feels a little bit safer on the map. Well, um, I got to say, I thought DRG's creep spread would be just a little bit better. Mm. Um, not that it's bad, but, you know, I'm trying to find some flaw in the greatest StarCraft two player of all time. But, um, you know, I, I would have expected it to be a little bit more spread out here. But it looks like, um, you know, JYP has been ag aggressive enough with these Zelts in this, uh, for instance, over here, this one we have on the map, that uh, it's been a little bit tougher to have the Creep Trimmers push out a lot. And when you really think about it, that's very helpful on a map that's this big. Oh, yeah. Zerg only has maybe one third of the map covered in Creep. Protoss is going to be in very good shape. Yeah, you know, if the creep is already halfway across the map, like some players will make sure that it is, then Protoss is just in trouble. You really can't advance on that creep. They can see everything you're doing. Their units are going to be so fast that they can surround you before you know it, before blink of an eye or the blink of a stalker. <laughs> and uh, that's that's always bad news. So we do have a ton of roaches moving across the map. Oh, by right the way, now. it's 100. It's basically a maxed out Zerg yeah. against a, a half maxed out. Protoss, so while we were talking about cool map theory, uh, DRG uh, has reached the limit of a number of units he can make in the game. Yeah, so that's generally how he rolls. That's pretty much how he does it. He just he says, well, you know, uh, roaches are good, right? And he you know, says, yeah, sure. Well, why don't I just make as many roaches as the game will let me, and then I throw them at my opponent? Well, that's a great strategy, DRG. And uh, we're going to see it be executed now. Now, the position here is pretty good for uh, JYP, but at the, oh, my god, uh, he might try to get to the main. But honestly, the, the, the sheer number of roaches here for uh, DRG oh. might be too much. Nice force field, so really nice force Insanely field. Insanely good force field. But fields. he's targeting the Nexus and the Forge. Oh, man, and it looks like he's definitely going to get that Nexus, but he's sacrificed a lot of units to it. Does it matter? I think 
Maybe not. He's still got a lot of supply left over here. And in fact, getting into that natural base, he's going to pick off even more. Maybe that Robo. I, I, I guess you can do this. I didn't understand that um, this was actually physically possible to do, but only for essentially, DRG. Essentially, he just stayed on three base and got maxed out. He somehow has the exact mathematical perfect understanding of exactly how many drones he needs, when and where. Uh, and uh, the perfect number of larva injects have so many units that although JYP's positioning was beautiful um, and geometrically very sound, they, there was just too much Zerg stuff. Way too much Zerg yeah. stuff. That is the technical That is my term technical for it. analysis is way too much Zerg stuff. Mm. But the supply gap has come a lot closer for JYP. Before it was a maxed army against a 108 army. Now it's 131 to 169. So that's a much better situation, especially now that he's going to kill off all these. JYP definitely still has a shot here. In fact, DRG, did he overextend with that second part of the push into the natural? Yeah, that's the big question. Did DRG overextend? If DRG holds this, he is in such good position. Nice force fields. Um, Great uh, isolating move there. Now, uh, JYP now going to curve around here, uh, saying he probably should not go in from uh, this angle. He could plant a pylon up here and try to push. If JYP could turn this around, it would be a miracle because DRG uh, did so many crippling blows. Um, he did he get the queen. Uh, nice force fields. Um, actually, the force fields could have been a little bit better, but um, not the worst I've seen. And uh, now blinking back, the pylon is finishing, so the next wave of stock is coming in here. The supplies are starting to even out. Now, DRG just trying to get as much surface area as possible, trying to damage these enough. But yes, it's beginning to really look like he has massively overextended with those attacks towards JYP, as JYP's Blink Sucker Micro is just so intense. But these spine crawlers rooting are going to help out a lot. Blink Micro is a lot harder with a few spine crawlers hitting your army, but the roach count is suffering greatly. And in fact, JYP supply he, is going way past he's DRG. He's just barely keeping enough stalkers alive. I think DRG, oh, he's making him dance. This, GG. Wow. JYP with a very nice counter attack. You know, when you trade that many roaches for the economy of that third base and then lose them all, and then run extra ones into the natural and really don't have them do as much as you need them to, you're probably going to lose to that counterattack if you have stalkers like JYP. Day 9, DJ Wheat, your thoughts? I mean, that really just do goes to show if you build too many roaches in the mid game, you got to be very careful what you do with them. And I, again, we're seeing so many Zergs just go roachless. Even DRG in the yeah. last game, Ling Mew to Baneling. Yeah, and actually, it was the attack at the natural of JYP that looked like it could have been the most deadly. Maybe if there were even a few roaches less at the third, and they went for the natural mm -hmm. because it seemed like JYP put all of his focus at that third base. But um, yeah, I mean, overextension. For sure. At the same time, though, I'm really excited to see JYP going for much more of a mid-game focus. I mean, it's very easy to get over-aggressive, try to commit so much to killing off that third base right at the eight-minute mark, the nine-minute mark, and then you're forced on kind of two bases, seven-gate, blink, stalker. Yeah. But all of a sudden in that game, we saw him going for third base, going for the long-term econ. Sure, he took some pretty big battery there, but easily just sort of smashed back against well, DRG. I just want to say that I'm so relieved to find out that you can't actually get away with that as Zerg. That was basically <laughs> like watching a kid build a castle with Legos, and he puts each one so carefully, and then watching another kid just run up and knock it down. I was like, I, is that how StarCraft works? Well, apparently not. You can't focus fire that many uh, things inside the base and not expect a counterattack. Yeah, man. That Lego apart. castle can't take down a third and defend the counterattack. No, not going to happen. It's not how Legos work. Uh, we'll be back soon here at MLG with game number three between JYP and DRG.